Hello, I'm Timothy Brussella, and I'm doing a little business calculus today for my Math 1325 class. Uh, we're looking at the uh, first derivative test. Recall a little bit about lines, first of all, okay? You'll need to recall that if a line is rising from left to right, we know that its slope is positive, and if a line is falling, we know that the slope is negative. We know that vertical, uh, horizontal lines, let's do that first, I mean next. A horizontal line has a slope of zero. And finally, a vertical line, a slope tells us how the y values are changing as the x values are changed. A vertical line, those x values never change, so to ask yourself how does y change as x uh, changes is meaningless. So we say that that slope is undefined. So now let's look at a graph, okay? Moving on to the calculus uh, material. Let's suppose we have the following curve. Let's uh, suppose that's the graph of y equals f of x. If the function, uh, let's look over here to the, uh, uh, on the left hand side. If we choose a point over here on the left side and draw the tangent line, we see that the tangent line is rising from left to right. And remember, the slope of the tangent line is given by the derivative of f. So we would say that over here, where the graph is rising from left to right, f prime is greater than zero. Up here at this uh, high point, that smooth turnaround right there, if we draw the tangent line, we're going to get a horizontal line. So, we know that the slope of a horizontal line is zero. That means the derivative up there at that high point has to be zero. So right there, f prime is equal to zero. Now over here, where the graph is falling, choose a point, draw in the tangent line. Oops, well, there, I guess that'll do. You see that it's falling from left to right, so the derivative is negative. The slope is negative, so the derivative is negative. Right here, we can go through the same argument. It's another smooth turnaround. So the derivative has to equal zero. And likewise, over here, we can convince ourselves, draw a tangent line, and we'll see that f prime is greater than zero. So to the left of uh, the point for the derivative is equal to zero, the line is rising from left to right. We say the function is increasing. From that uh, high point down to this low point here, the graph is falling. So we say the function is decreasing over that interval. And likewise, over here to the right, we say the function is increasing again. In general, we say that a function is increasing on an interval if the derivative is positive for all values in that interval. A function is decreasing if uh, the derivative is negative for all values of x in that interval. Oh. And so we see that a function can change from increasing to decreasing when the derivative is equal to zero. There's another situation in which a function could change from increasing to decreasing. Suppose we have this graph here. Mm, let's see. Mm, it's going to come down and then go like that. 
uh, right there. If we try to draw tangent lines, we'll see to the immediate, if we drew, uh, if we drew uh, as it approaches here on the immediate left, the tangent line looks like it's falling from left to right. So the derivative is negative. But to the immediate right, as it's approaching that point, the tangent line is rising from left to right. That means the derivative is positive. If a derivative exists, it has to be the uh, uh, same number, and we'll notice that this one's positive, that one's negative, the derivative. So I guess if you kept on uh, drawing, can you see what would happen? This little sharp point is referred to as a cusp. If we kept on moving in closer and closer, eventually it would look like that tangent line is approaching a vertical line, and we all know what the slope of a vertical line is. Either way, at a sharp point, that's what I'm going to call it, at a sharp point of a graph, the derivative is undefined. So I have a, a definition here. Okay, definition. Let's assume C is in the domain of F. So the function has to be defined at f, I mean at uh, c. The number c is a critical number if, if exactly one of the following is true. They can't both be true. If exactly one of the following is true. One, f prime of c is equal to zero. Or two, f prime of c is undefined. Graphically, if f prime at c is equal to zero, we have one of those uh, uh, horizontal tangent lines. So we expect to have the graph look something like that or that, a smooth uh, turnaround. The other possibility, f prime at c is equal to zero, that's when we can have, you can think of it as being one of those sharp points like that. Either way, where can a graph change directions? When can a graph change from increasing to decreasing? A graph can change directions at a critical number Or two, the other possibility, a graph can change directions uh, when you move from one side of a vertical asymptote to another. Remember the value of a vertical asymptote is not in the domain of the function, but the function could be increasing to the left of a vertical asymptote and decreasing uh, to the right of the vertical asymptote or vice versa. So I'll say add a vertical asymptote. Oh, the motion sensor cut off the lights there. Sorry about that. Okay. And that brings us to the first derivative test. I suppose I may as well go ahead and uh, uh, introduce some terminology. Let's look back at, before I state the first derivative test, look back at this graph of this function that we have here. If a function is increasing on one side, 
and decreasing on the other, that high point where the graph changes the uh, direction is referred to as a local maximum. A local maximum. It's also called a relative maximum. If a function is decreasing and then increasing, that low point is referred to as a local minimum. So in general, where the function's increasing and then decreasing, you have a local maximum. And where it's decreasing and then increasing, we have what's called a local or relative minimum. The first derivative test, mm, let's see. The first derivative test is used to determine the intervals over which a function is increasing or decreasing. So I'll say it's used to determine one when a function is increasing or decreasing. I'll say increasing slash decreasing intervals. And two is used to determine the location of local extrema. The local maximum values and the local minimum values uh, collectively are referred to as local extrema. So it's used to determine the location of local extrema. When you're determining increasing and decreasing, you're, you're automatically, when you're using this test, I'm about to uh, uh, write out, you're determining local extreme as well. So whether they're asking for increasing or decreasing intervals or local extrema, you use the following steps. Here, here are the steps. First thing, you have to determine your local, uh, your critical numbers because uh, those are the numbers in the domain of which the function can change from increasing to decreasing and vice versa. So I'll say determine critical numbers In order to determine the critical numbers, you're going to have to find f prime. So you have to find f prime, and then you ask yourself, where is f prime equal to zero? Where is f prime undefined? Next, we need an organized way of summarizing what we're going to find. So what I'll do is I'll draw a number line. Label the critical numbers on that number line. Then, I'll have a number line with a series of intervals uh, uh, created. They'll be split up by the critical numbers. I'll choose a number in each interval and test uh, the derivative. And I'll say, ch choose a number in each interval and, well, test the derivative. That means substitute that number into the derivative. I better write it like that. And substitute it. I'll say substitute each number into f prime of x. Realize if f prime is positive that means the function's increasing on the interval. 
And if, uh, if f prime is negative, that means the function is decreasing on that interval. The fourth and final uh, step, we can now determine our local extrema. If it's, if the derivative is positive on one side of the uh, critical number and negative on the other, then we expect to have a local maximum at the critical number. If the derivative is negative and then positive, we expect to have a local minimum. I think now we're ready to look at an example. So let me find us an example.